Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Caressa Explains It All. I am Caressa, I explain it all. And in today's episode, this is actually part two or three part episode. We are talking about pretty much 2017 now, which leads up to my big burnout in 2018. And I actually talk about the burnout in this episode because there's like three episodes prior to this one. That's all kind of leading up to it. And this is the big events. This video literally picks up where the last one left off. So if it sounds like I'm kind of mid thought, it's because I am. Um, so you're welcome to watch part one or just pick up right here and I'll see you in the video. And so, as I always do when I'm in my happy place, I went to work learning more. I still was not fixing the situation of hating my job and getting out of that job. I, I, I kind of, you know, I found entrepreneurship and I was like, oh, well, this, I'd love to do this. I'd love to work for myself. So entrepreneurship was kind of like this vague goal where I was like, I'm gonna do that and that's how I'm gonna get out of my job. And so I started following all these entrepreneurs. Um, this is going into 2017. I kind of got like reinvigorated of like, I'm gonna learn all this stuff. I'm gonna do all these things and so, Oh my God, it's no wonder I burnt out. But what I ended up doing, I got really, really into leadership again. And my boss gave me another book, Start With Why. Uh, there's the letter inside. Um, and I just, I just dove even deeper into becoming the best version of myself that I could be. And so I read about Flow State with The Rise of Superman by Stephen Kotler. This book like changed my life because I understood flow state. And so then I focused on creating flow state in the workplace with my coworkers. I focused on creating flow in my life and understanding that, that there are three external triggers and three internal triggers. And if you can trigger all those things while you're reading or researching, you can really tap into, um, this may seem a little woo woo, but it's in spiritual, but like the Akashic records, the collective consciousness, the, Jungian archetypes that are out there. Um, and that's what I was doing, even though I was years from understanding what the hell it was I was doing. I loved researching and understanding like how does our world work? I'd watch different movies about um, quantum physics, dimensions, um, consciousness, collective consciousness. I made graphics. Yes, graphics. This is, this is Maslow's um, not hierarchy of needs, but flow state and how it's triggered. Yes, this is what I did in my free time after working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, because yes, I worked that much. Uh, and just creating these like graphics of like, how does the mind work? How does the human psyche work? I wanted to understand different virtues. So this is love. And this is every definition I could find out in the internet of what love is. And then I would make vision boards, little books that I could take with me in my purse to understand and to remind myself this is what love is so I could practice more love. Of course I burnt out after all this, but like at the time I didn't realize that I was doing it to myself. Um, just understanding, you know, like life cycles, how to be a human. Um, I would research these different words like wisdom and insight and how to, be more honest, how to be more patient, how to have ambition. I, like I'm gonna teach these on YouTube because I just find it fascinating, okay? Like I know it's super nerdy, but like that's what I did. That's what I did with my free time. And this is, I found one of the vision boards in, in that leadership book. Um, this is one, I would carry these in my purse, you know, be the leader you would follow. How you make others feel about themselves says a lot about you all that good stuff, you know, like I wanted to be the best version of myself. So that's not all, that's just what I was researching. In my real life, I was like, you know, I've always wanted to do parkour, like hardcore parkour. And so I went and signed up for parkour classes. I also wanted to learn how to speak, how to speak confidently in front of a group of people. So I joined Toastmasters, which is like, um, it's like a public group you can join, um, you pay a little bit of dues and you practice giving speeches and you get um, feedback from your peers on like how you did and there's different speech themes that you do. And um, the first night that I went, I they asked uh, the newbies to stand up and give kind of like a one minute little round robin, like they'd ask a random question, you're supposed to speak about it for a minute. And I stood up there and cried <clears throat> in front of like 30 people, just bawled my eyes out because the question I got was what would you advise your um, fourth grade self to do and what I would have told her to do was to embrace her and not be scared to speak her truth which is exactly what I was doing in that room and I was absolutely terrified of it so I broke down and cried in front of everybody 
And then because I enjoyed torturing myself, I signed up for Toastmasters so I could give more speeches. I actually gave a really inspiring speech after that um, about how I'm the kind of person who would come back and like try again and a bunch of people signed up for Toastmasters that night after hearing my speech. So that was wonderful. Um, but I decided that I wasn't that great at public speaking, so I should probably try harder and go join improv. So I joined an improv class. And then I decided I didn't like the sound of my voice on video, and so I signed up for a vo vocal coach. This is all within like the span of like two months, <laughs> beginning of 2017. So at the same time at work, we were opening new stores, and so I would go to the new stores and set it up for several days and like train the new people and like do that. Well, I'm still responsible for my store and its sales and my coworkers there. And, um, she's Louise just kept loading up my plate with more and more stuff to do at work. That was fun because when I had to be there, at least I could try to have fun. But then I was also doing all this stuff in my free time. Right. I found one of those, um, kind of entrepreneur type people who were like, join my program, my academy, and we'll teach you all these things. And you'll get on calls with these like really, famous like successful millionaires you know like people like brendan bouchard mel robbins tom bilyeu tony robbins like all these people who were really big then i think they're still big now but like there was like this time where like they were up like this everyone was up and coming like this bro entrepreneur kind of feel it felt like the synergy and so this was a really expensive program i felt like Okay, I have the money, kind of. I did take out a loan. And I felt like, you know, if I just throw money at the problem, then like, and I just need the support network and like people to believe in me, then I feel like I can do YouTube or whatever. Uh, it was great. It really was great for what it was. But that person had partnered with someone else who I joined their program too, to be able to write a book. Uh, like, I just feel like, Carissa, do you ever learn, you know, like, no, I, that's mean, that's harsh on myself, but I'm just looking back, I'm just like, <sighs> you know? Um, but I, I couldn't, I didn't know any better at the time, so that's just what I did, this is my story. So I signed up for those, defaulted on that loan. But I did gain a level of self-confidence. It helped, it helped. Something cool that came out of it was the person that was the head of that first program, he got invited to speak at something called <sighs> Success Live which was a really, really cool uh, event in September of 2017. Um, and there was a bunch of like famous speakers and people that I was like just getting really into. So like, let's see here, Peter Diamandis, Brendan Burchard, Les Brown, the freaking rock star god of like motivational speaking, <laughs> Tom Bilyeu, Dean Graziosi, Shailene Johnson, Mel Robbins, Jocko Willink, like all these people were there. And it was incredible. And I met Tom Bilyeu, this picture of us. Aha! And I had just found him because he, he had just started Impact Theory like earlier that year, I believe, I believe. I, I don't think that they had more than a couple hundred thousand people subscribed. Like it was very, very brand new when I found it. And it was like super exciting. It was like, oh my gosh, here's a guy who gets it, who has integrity, who um, is a good person, who wants to help other people, and he's really into this mental mindset stuff. So like, I just gobbled all that up. And I loved it because his interviews were with people who had, they lived these lives and like, had these experiences and gained this wisdom. And here we have this like, within an hour, you glean all the golden nuggets of wisdom of their life. And so what I learned, like I think in that flow state book, was we have to learn to live multiple t lifetimes in one lifetime. And so what better way to do it than to access all the wisdom from as many people as you can and embody that, integrate that into your life so that you can like you can build your life faster because you're using the wisdom of other people's hard, hard earned wisdom from the battles that they have fought, you know? So you don't have to go through those same struggles. You just incorporate what they've learned, which doesn't always work, but um, enough so that you really jumpstart yourself. So I was listening to Impact Theory for one to three hours every single day for eight months when I found him. I think I found them in like August of 2017. And that was really, um, that was a really empowering time. I was still very much in my mind. I did not understand my emotions and I repressed my emotions severely, but it was really helpful because I was learning a stoic mindset, how to not be reactive, how to set boundaries around my time with work and time with customers and time with people. So I did not let anybody 
call me or text me on my days off. Um, those were my time and I am not getting paid by the company in that time. And so my time means me and I don't pay attention to anyone else. And I started back then, I think, with the habit of turning off all notifications on my phone. And I still I still do that to this day. I don't, there are no, no notifications on my phone. If I wanna check my messages, I have to go into the app and actually check to see if I have a message. So absolutely no distractions. My time, my focus, and attention is my own. They are my resources that I have that no one can take away, um, but I have to choose to be very deliberate with it. So I like, I feel like I've gotten very like structured and stuff in what I'm talking about right now, but that was really where I was at energetically at that time. Super just focused, disciplined, um, really rigid and like keeping myself in line. And I kind of had to with how much I was loading up on my plate. <laughs> Um, I had to be very disciplined about my time and where my efforts and attention were going. I think it added to the illusion that I was moving my life forward in a way that was going to change my circumstances. And I still wasn't questioning. I mean, I assumed that I was gonna do YouTube and then make it big and like not have to worry about money anymore and I could quit my job. And I was kind of like living this like fantasy idea of that because I never actually had like steps to do that. It was just kind of like, oh, that's what I'm gonna do. But anyway, um, I, read a, I read a great book, this is late 2017, about um, a mind palace, how to build a mind palace. It was called Moonwalking with Einstein. In fact, I have it. One second. You don't even have to believe in mind palaces or want to do a mind palace. It's just a fun book to read. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and it gave me this idea that you could actually build a place in your mind where you could go do things. This was a precursor to much of my shadow work journey and emotional healing journey because it gave me a place to go to in my mind. But at the time I didn't understand any of that and I wasn't aware of any of that spiritual or emotional stuff. And so I used the mind palace to kind of change the emotional attachment to certain memories that would come up when I was really, really depressed and kind of prove to me that I was a bad person or not capable or not worthy of love or whatever. Uh, and I call it like my rut thinking. These are periods of depression, usually around that time of the month um, where the hormones dip. And I, of course I was disconnected and depressed and felt stuck and isolated in my own life. And so these periods of rut thinking would come along and these memories would come up and just be like, see, see, like you don't deserve these things or this is what happened to you. You are a victim. You are, you cannot have what you want, all these things. And so the mind palace actually gave me a place to go to where I could perform surgery on these memories. Uh, this is kind of like a Tony Robbins-esque thing where I could like take out the emotion of it and then rewrite the ending. It's not that I actually re-changed what that memory was. I still remember what the original memory was, but I allowed myself to experience the emotional gratification of what if that had not been such a disempowering event? What if I had told a different story about it? Which is very important in emotional healing later. Um, but it's wild to me that intuitively, and through the things that I was, the resources that were coming into my vision at the time um, allowed me to do something that is a very intuitive human experience. I think that we all have the capability to intuitively tap into what our body and mind and soul needs to heal itself if given the proper time and rest and space to do those things. So I'm not gonna go off on that tangent, but it's just a really interesting thing to note. And it was kind of a precursor of what was about to come in my journey of going into emotional work, shadow work, uh, spirituality. Something else happened to me in 2017. Was it 2017 or 2016? 2017, because it was about flow state. I had just been learning about flow state. This was like March of 2017. So we're gonna backtrack just a tad bit. And um, I had triggered flow state on purpose several times over and I was experiencing it on one particular day. And um, this could also be like law of attraction alignment, um, being in alignment with universal divine will, law, whatever. Uh, and so you experience just a rendezvousing of wonderful events and it feels like serendipitous and it's incredible and whatever. But like at the time I was just experiencing it as this is what flow state is and I can get into the state of feeling harmonious and everything just kind of flows to me. And that's the extent of what I, how I could understand it at the time. Um, and I had this flow state experience and it kind of tipped like the pot, the, like it popped like the tip of this 
day like experience kind of popped off as I was watching Lost. I love you, Lost. Um, Lost, the TV show with, you know, J.J. Abrams and all that, where they're on the island. And um, I was watching one of the final seasons, I think it was season five or six, and I just all of a sudden had this crazy ass enlightenment experience and things happened and it was wild. And so it really shook up my, I thought I was certain that things like that don't exist. And when you experience something that goes against what you believe is possible, you can't help but question things. I mean, you can either repress it and choose not to address it, or you can start questioning everything. And so that really started to make me question things and question my reality and question my perception of reality um, and what was possible. And that was also a precursor going into 2018. So. The reason why I bring it up is because there were hints along the way. It's not like I just hit burnout, quit my job, and then like went all spiritual. There were events leading up to this that were opening me up to be able to receive a new way of being, thinking, and feeling in the world. So we come to the point of late 2017. It's, I don't know, September, October, November, December, somewhere in there. And I am, I am at this point where I'm talking to my boss again, and she's like, here we go again. We talked like a year ago, like you weren't happy, and like the year before that, you weren't happy and you wanted to change stores and get a promotion and all this stuff. And then we talked last year, and like you're depressed as hell, and I tell you to be happy, and then here we are a year later in 2017, and you're telling me like you're so burnt out. So she and I came up, I don't remember who said what or how it came about, but Basically, I was like, I need to step down out of the responsibilities of this job because I cannot be working 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week and working on my YouTube channel, which I never did. <laughs> but I actually have videos from back in that time where I had started it and, oh yeah, that's right, oh my gosh. I was doing these projects like with all, like I brought in my coworkers and my sisters and like all these people who wanted to be a part of these video projects and we went out to like San Francisco and Pier 39 and like the Palace of Fine Arts and like just filmed these videos and they're so cute and maybe eventually I'll post them but like oh my gosh I totally forgot I was trying to I was trying to articulate the things that I was learning into a visual experience for people and it was so esoteric I don't know that people would actually get what I was trying to communicate because I was so like far removed from being able to ground my ideas into the this plane of like understanding I don't know I was just so I was so detached from reality, guys, but um, it was okay. I love myself for that. Um, it, it was a beautiful part of my journey. That's who I was at that time. Uh, <clears throat> so late 2017, I'm just like, I can't stand it. I This is taking away time from my focus and I want to focus on YouTube and I'm going to make it and I'm going to like, you know, I'm thinking like, I'm going to be able to quit my job. And I just need more time. I just need more time to myself. And it was true. I was burnt the heck out and doing so much work that I hated. I hate Like if you've worked in customer service, uh, dealing with customers and the same problems over and over again. And I told my boss, I was like, it's not that I don't want to solve problems. I enjoy solving problems. It's the fact that I'm saving, I'm solving the same exact problems every freaking day. And I don't care to solve these types of problems, these customer service issues makeability issues for the product that we're selling. I just don't care. And I've done it a billion times. There's nothing new. There's nothing challenging or exciting. And it's just draining. And I want out. And so she's like, okay, let's get you like, let's get someone else in your role in your management role. And let's get you step down. Like you can work as an associate in your store or in another store, wherever you need. I think the plan was I had an assistant manager, a new store was going to open in a new area. Like, six months from then or something. And so I was gonna step down as an associate and then once she opened her store, I'd become her main associate and she'd be my manager, whatever. Um, and so that was the plan. So I stepped down and that was end of 2017, beginning of 2018. There was another store close by that had no staff. And so I had to go over there and train the person that was supposed to be manager, but of course, because they don't know how to be manager yet, I'm being the manager, even though I'd stepped down and taken the salary cut, I was no longer salary, I was like stepping down. And, um, and I was working just as many hours and I was even more stressed because this store was the store from hell. If you've ever seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the hell mouth, that's what this store was built on top of. <clears throat> it was the worst, the worst. <laughs> and I'd worked at 15 of our store locations in Northern California. 
I knew like the clientele of different stores, the energy within different ones. And this was the worst, the entitlement of the customers, everything in the store broke down on a daily basis. And so you could not do your job. In my first video, I talked about trying to control everything. And I just, I tried so hard to keep it together. And then I, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. Essentially, I was supposed to be able to go to that other store, right? That new store in that new location, but construction kept putting that off. And so we had to keep delaying the opening of that. And so it was later and later and later in the year. And so finally, in May of 2018, I was like, I cannot take this anymore. I cannot take this anymore. And you're telling me that, that new store is still not going to open for another six months? Well, you said that six months ago. We have no staff. I am, I literally have no energy to show up here anymore. And like, I get it how much I contributed to my own burnout because one, I'd overloaded myself. Two, I was looking for acceptance and the company to provide a stability to me that I was not meeting myself. I could have taken more time to self-care and eat right and exercise and just have happiness outside of my work, not focusing on my work, not focusing on trying to get projects up and running, not trying to get YouTube up and going. like. But at the same time, I was like, that was my way out. You know, I didn't feel like there was another way to get out of my situation, but to overload and like try to do both, you know, try to do the job I was at and that other job that I wanted. I was so caught up in like, this is the way my life has to be. I hadn't questioned like, do I have savings? Can I do something else? Can I make another job work? I'd been so focused on my other projects too. So I wasn't thinking about what's the other possibility. And it was like, if I can just get to when that new store opens, because we thought that store was opening, we changed where we lived to this place. And this place was an hour south. I were now commuting an hour to work. And and so I was just like, I'm done, enough, I can't. This is it, this is end of the line, I have to quit. And I looked at my finances and I was like, actually we have enough savings where I could quit for a little while and find a different job. And so I did it. I, I put in my two weeks notice. I have a video to share with you guys, a couple videos actually, I documented my two week journey. So I'm curious to see what 28 year old me had to say at that time of burnout. Hello, editing Carissa here. Um, we will have reached the end of part two of episode three and part three is right here for you to watch. This is my reaction video where I, my 34 year old now self reacts to my then six years ago, 28 year old self putting in her two weeks and her thoughts and her feelings. And I just think that she's much better able to express those thoughts and feelings because she's in the moment and I am many years past that now. So if you want to watch that reaction video, that's right there and I'll see you there.